Atu Akwaba Miwezu. And the response to that is yo. So welcome guys. Thanks for coming and joining me. Um, sorry it's been so long. This has been a real struggle. I really worked on a script to get stuff done and I haven't been happy with my script. I haven't have been happy with how I filmed it. I put a lot of pressure on myself to actually make something decent and improve the quality of it. And it just hasn't flowed and I've been trying to work out a lot of things and get places and try not to repeat myself. The biggest question I got asked in Ghana and once I was back for people to understand was why Ghana or how did you choose Ghana? Was it a woman? Was it an author? Was it a beautiful woman? Or maybe even a tall, dark, handsome man. Stick around to the end and be surprised to find out who it actually was who inspired me. I mean, there was lots of lots of sources of inspiration, but uh, stick around and I'll give you the uh, top five reasons as to why I chose Ghana, or maybe even how Ghana chose me. Let me know in the comments if you've ever wondered, hey, what's this obroni doing here in Ghana or talking and eating all things Ghana? Why? doesn't make sense how let me know and we'll get on to it let's get into the five reasons um, I did do a script and my script sucked and so shout out to one of my subbies and great sources of reflection I guess or direction is actually rainbow so give them a uh, reply in the comments <laughs> and yes I shouted you out right in the middle at the beginning for maybe trying to choose this to go back to more of a natural flowing organic kind of expression or explanation as to why let's get into it and I'll probably look to my notes to the side so you may see me glance and that's meant to <laughs> take away from the authenticity of my my video and my telling my story. Um, my number one reason, <laughs> I just got number one, is people. It's the people of Ghana, it's people in the diaspora. Um, it's It's been customers back in Australia in, in 2011. It's It's been people like my favorite, now I've coined the term, you know, Ghana Roo for a favorite Aussie in Ghana, which is, or my favorite Ghanaian Aussie in Ghana, which is Jasmine Ama, or myself landing in Ghana and hopping around and having a look at things. My other inspiration and shout out and special thanks to for these shirts, like you can see here, is Arbana and Michael of Destination Africa. Their inspiration, their interviews, those from the diaspora, you know, going back to Ghana and exploring. <laughs> what, what better message than patience, unity and respect? This can go a long way and I've been waiting, and since I've come back, I'm waiting for summer to get out in this, these t-shirts and show off these t-shirts and get asked questions in Canada. For their interviews, their inspiration and learning tree and the importance of language it is definitely one of them. Who else? It's, it's been Ghanaians online. It's been the beautiful Arbana, Arbana Bempa. It's, it's been my customers back in Australia. The, the influence is wide. It's also Lady Denta Amoateng and the Odana Network and her interviews. And I love those. And they've been a great source. And, you know, have given me people to go and see and buy a henema from and that was even you know these were on my list of places to go and see and there's also amazing pharmacists yeah I didn't introduce myself at the beginning after uh, my welcome message but I'm Campbell or at the Plamina and I'm a pharmacist I read books and I read books by black female authors um, so there's part of the message as to why Ghana so so they're the Ghanaians that you know Ghanaians in the diaspora around the world that have been influential who have influenced my decision uh, to choose Ghana and to go and visit and explore um, my number two reason is books and my biggest, biggest inspiration after moving to a new town back in 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic and buying my ticket to Ghana and then realizing that we may not have the option of going is somehow I'd asked Arbana if she recommended any good books and I'd searched up and also found that this was recommended as a book to learn about Ghana. Another way to learn about a country is to, to read their read their writers, read the books of their writers of that country. Ya Jiasi's Homegoing was one of the huge influences on my journey to, to Ghana. Why am I there? This was an incredible portrayal of 
Ghana, Ghana's history before the transatlantic slave atrocities, we'll call them, because that's what they are. But giving the richness, the texture, the colour, um, all the emotions that came with this, this book were incredible. Um, other books, you know, that sort of helped help guide me to West Africa, you know, uh, Chimamanda's Half of a Yellow Sun. And funny enough, I identify with Ugu the houseboy. And maybe that's because he cooks and he nurtures others. And maybe that's me identifying with that. And hey, if anybody's after a houseboy, I'm looking to come back. So applications being, being taken or maybe sought after. Maybe I need some improvement on my cooking. That leads me into maybe number three, and that's the food of Ghana. So once I worked out that I couldn't go to Ghana, I turned to, to YouTube and was learning how to cook Ghanaian food. So I was cooking Ghanaian food here before I'd even reached Ghana, um, thanks to those in the diaspora, thanks to Sweet Angela, thanks to Nanaba's Kitchen, and teaching me all the little tricks or nuances and flavours of Ghanaian cuisine. Uh, I didn't mention before, but you know, there's been some Jamaicans who have had some influence in my life and introduced me to Ghanaian flavors and foods, only to find out that the probable source of those flavors is Ghana. And maybe it's a little bit different, but I love to make my own curry powders and make things from scratch. I also made tolo beef, my own tolo beef with uh, some lamb ribs. Where was I going to get that from any butcher here? Nowhere. And luckily it's easy enough to make. So converting or transforming, you know, meat with salt and spices is something that I've got some experience with and enjoy doing. And the flavor was amazing. It was delicious. So... I'm definitely going to do that. I'm not sure if that'll sustain me when I'm trying to get back to Ghana. I think everybody's got that market cornered. The food and flavors, nothing nothing was different. You know, once I started cooking things and my veggie okra stew to begin with wasn't much <laughs> wasn't much to talk about or enjoy. And but it slowly improved. Um, I started looking then for banku to have and you know, that's probably why I'll choose banku and okra stew or okra soup. It's like second nature. It's it's something that's easy to to eat and you've seen from my other videos that just learning and cooking and emulating or hoping that copying is the the greatest form of flattery uh, to all the fantastic Ghanaian aunties and, and women that show how to cook these dishes on YouTube and again this all just reflects back on Ghanaians in the diaspora influencing the world and making the world look at Ghana. I'm sure there's more that I wish I had have said and I'll try and remember it, but we'll get to it. Let's see, what's the fourth? Fourth item is, is the culture. As you can see, my love for language, for printed fabrics, for beautiful things was only fostered in Ghana. Once I had to cancel my ticket the first time, my mother made the quilt and then I didn't bring back any fabric. Now I'm in trouble. So I need to come back and I need to send a pile of fabric back to Australia for her to enjoy. There's, you know, Arbana and Michael Richardson of Destination Africa. They they were major influences in allowing me to understand Chui and then delving into to that, to, to making an effort to connect with Ghanaians in Ghana and then learning and discovering. Like most countries, there's multiple ethnicities and different dialects. Dialects. That's been a huge thing about Ghanaian culture. I mean, food, fabric, music, politeness, sometimes directness of even being asked in Elmina by a lady sitting on the side of the road after saying good afternoon to her. Her question was, why are you here? And I said, partly because of food, partly to explore history. And that leads me into number five. That is history, the history of uh, Ghana and the history of West Africa and learning that history. Um, Homegoing was definitely an eye-opener and into that side of Ghana. I mean, sure, you hear and you learn from whatever North American mass-produced media is one side of the story. And getting to know Jamaicans and then knowing Nanny of the Maroons and then understanding where Nanny came from um, and taking those steps back and then understanding Jamaica's connection to Ghana. And not just that, Grenada's connection as well. 
um, to the Fanti people of Grenada. There's just so much rich history and, you know, again, I often got asked, why am I here? And, you know, I definitely got some strange looks in Elmina and Cape Coast of why was I there? My reason for visiting was to give respect for those past. They may not be my ancestors in this lifetime. I may have been there in another lifetime. We don't know. I had a calling to go and pay respects. See the plaque in the Cape Coast dungeons of never letting this ever happen again. I've lived in now two, two countries, major colonies of Britain or Great Britain and the the empire that it once was the atrocities that 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 empire has conducted throughout the world there's a lot of similarities actually between Australia and Ghana you may not know that Australia has the oldest continuous living indigenous black population that is actually 60,000 years old of continuous living indigenous culture what's not widely taught in schools and widely known by the rest of the world other than for you know Australia's pretty horrific human rights record when it comes to indigenous peoples and refugees that many massacres happened at the beginning of colonization of Australia. Australia is another country with a black population that was colonized by the English. And you know, there's so many stories that are only, only coming out now about indigenous heroes, indigenous legends that people are only researching now. It's not taught in schools. Um, other similarities are giving mining companies, the government giving mining companies benefit and access to indigenous land Lands to mine them and then reap the benefits of it. I guess that sounds familiar. One of the things as well is the, is the place of of religion in say Ghana and the placement and how that started and looking at that history and it's the same you know in in Australia and in Canada and we look at the the placement of the Catholic Church in both countries and their roles in stolen generations. Uh, residential schools in Canada and, and the placement of churches on top of dungeons. Now I won't go into that too much because that's a burning topic that I'll get into trouble and have already been into trouble with on Instagram but I'll try not to get into that trouble here. That is the history that people may not be aware of Australia and understanding that history and I do get often asked why are you interested in this side of things and partly it is because of Australia and my experience there and understanding can connection to country, connection to land, all the different indigenous nations. Australia used to be made up of something like 650 plus different nations with different languages, whether it be the desert people, whether it be the saltwater people of Australia. That, that's a history that's not shared. One of the other things I'd forgotten to mention about Australia is the, uh, the use of South Sea or South Pacific Islanders to work on sugar and cotton plantations in Queensland and I'll leave a link in the description, but look up blackbirding in Australia. You know, that's something, something that people don't hear about. It's not widely known. And like I say, I'll put a link in there. So history was a big, a big reason for coming to Ghana, for sure. And like I say, home going really spurred that on. I guess one of the other things coming back to books, which I didn't mention, which I wanted to mention is, is books and authors and it's, it's female authors, it's black female authors and wanting to know those stories. And one notable mention as well that doesn't really play into how Ghana occurred, but how just wanting to hear those stories and by a Canadian Nigerian or Nigerian Canadian author with her debut novel and that was Francesca Ekuyasi and her de debut novel of, I'm going to mix, mix it up, but Butter, Bread, Pig, Honey. Now, maybe the other way around, but it was an amazing book, a beautiful book for her first novel. And I seriously recommend listening to that one for sure. So thanks very much if you've made it this far. This is probably a lot more natural, a lot more hopefully authentic. It'd be great if you can hit the like button, subscribe and leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching this far. Uh, I hope you've stuck around to maybe find out who the surprise character is or the biggest influence in my, and maybe there's more than one, there's definitely more than one, influence in choosing Ghana and why. You know, as far back as 2017, I'd be looking at flights at work. If we ever got quiet, quickest way to make pharmacy busy is start to look at flights and that's to whether it be to West Africa anywhere you know to Senegal to Namibia Botswana 
anywhere that you know I've wanted to get back to and everyone says and like I've learnt thanks to all the Ghanaians out there Ghana is a perfect gateway country back into the continent you know it certainly has and it certainly is one way that like I say Ghana will catch you or this is how Ghana will catch you stick around for uh, or what you've stuck around for hopefully is now the bonus of uh, who it was Special thanks to anyone who's made it this far and uh, hung in there. Drop a like if you if you do, share it with a friend and let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe. That'd be great. And so now for the, the bonus, hopefully what you were waiting for and stuck around for is to find out who that influential or key individual is. The man who, who led me to Ghana. Well, that's a bit of a beat up, but makes for a good story and he still deserves some credit for it you know I don't have a picture for this man or this gentleman as I would say and I would respect his privacy too however I can describe describe him and you will understand his presence and I'm sure some of my Ghanaian subbies will easily identify or recognize this type of man <laughs> this type of beautiful father-like figure that I'm coming to understand about Ghanaian dads and I could do another whole episode on on this on who or what represents Ghanaian fathers and the picture that I see of them or how I see them so this man is tall dark and somewhat handsome in his 60s at the time he was my customer is always freshly shaven cheerful and beaming a beaming smile but what was most distinctive about Mr. Adu was his voice one of those deep baritone voices that sounds like a mix of rich velvety chocolate red wine pouring out his mouth and saying hello also greeting my other Ghanaian customer and her little boy in the most polite Ghanaian way so he may have planted a seed when I left Australia in 2013 and here we are more than 10 years later the other big influence is the talented Arbana Bempa with her signature red kiss in all her images a red kiss of color showing off the diaspora Ghana and her journey and if Abana doesn't show you how Ghana will catch you then you best just keep it going because <laughs> there's no place for you here so to finish up there you have it it's a, a beautiful well beautiful to me long rich diverse list and maybe not expected number of reasons why or how I got to Ghana I returned back to Canada with unfinished business that's for sure a list of places to go to and it just keeps growing. The more I watch, especially Jasmine Armour, Watamaya, and anyone else, um, you know, all the amazing YouTubers of Ghana, you know, visiting Togo, visiting Cote d'Ivoire, uh, the different regions like Wa, um, thanks to Stella Chanelli and Miss Drew, and showing off more food, more just fantastic parts of Ghana. It's not dying off. The, the desire to come back, the desire to continue to explore is not decreasing. The desire to taste, to see, to feel, to hear is not going away whatsoever, which is which is quite good. It's clearly stuck with me and, and not disappearing in any way. So these are the, some of the reasons or the things that I want to come back and enjoy the rich beauty that West Africa has to offer and starting with Ghana and this is how Ghana will catch you. So thanks very much for watching. Medasi pa. Ojiwari don. I've said that wrong, I know. And Akbe. Somehow I think, I thought it was fun to you that I had much more draw or attraction to. Somehow I think it's airway and I think I need to also start exploring the food of Togo because the food of Togo is actually starting to ground me. So the Volta region is definitely coming back and will feature more and more. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm looking forward to responding. And uh, stick around for the credits. See if you've uh, made a mention in the credits. Got some in there for some special people. I'm wondering if maybe I should put the credits at the beginning. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.